Workers at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have discovered a small amount of liquid that appears to have leaked from a container of highly radioactive wastewater. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say when workers touched the container, a small volume of liquid leaked from a hole in the lid of the container. The hole is designed to vent gas. TEPCO officials believe it is wastewater from a system that treats contaminated water. It may include substances such as magnesium and a high density of radioactive materials. The resin container measures 1.5 meters in diameter and 1.8 meters in height. Utility officials say the liquid has not leaked out of the concrete structure housing the container. TEPCO says it will analyze the contents of the liquid and determine why it pooled on the lid. They add that depending on the results, they will also examine more than 670 containers in the same facility. A panel of Japan's governing Liberal Democratic Party wants nuclear power and other stable energy sources to play a larger role in the country's energy supply. The government plans to determine by June Japan's energy mix as of 2030. The LDP panel says Japan must overcome energy restrictions to achieve full-scale economic growth. It said the cost of electric power must be brought down as much as possible. The panel calls for making greater use of geothermal, coal, hydro and nuclear power. It advises raising the ratio of these baseload sources from 40 percent to around 60 percent back to the level before the 2011 nuclear accident. Baseload sources ensure a stable supply throughout the day at low cost. The panel also wants Japan's energy self-sufficiency raised, raised to around 25 percent. The rate is now 6 percent as all the country's nuclear reactors are offline. It will submit its proposal to Prime Minister Shinzo Abe next week. Nuclear regulators have begun screening three aging reactors in central Japan. They're checking to see if the reactors can be brought back online and maintained past the new mandated lifespan. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority started the process at the Takahama and Mihama plants in Fukui Prefecture. A regulation introduced after the 2011 nuclear disaster forbids the operation of reactors past 40 years. The ones at Takahama and Mihama are nearing that age. Officials from the utility Kansai Electric Power Company say they will upgrade old equipment to make it fireproof. And they say they will build a new emergency operation facility for the Takahama plant. The plant has to clear screenings by next July. Mihama has until next November. If they miss the deadlines, they'll be required to decommission the reactors. Other utility officials decided last month to dismantle five aging reactors. They say they can't justify the expense of upgrades to meet the new requirements. The operator of a nuclear power plant in central Japan is a step closer to restarting two reactors. Government regulators have approved the plan. The facility is the second to meet the new regulations introduced after the 2011 Fukushima accident. But not everyone agrees with the decision. NHK World's Karando Tago has more. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority were unanimous in giving approval for the restart. They say the number three and number four reactors of the Takahama nuclear plant meet the new requirements for withstanding potential earthquakes and tsunami. We've confirmed the plant's operator will guarantee the level of safety that the authority is demanding. The operator, Kansai Electric Power Company, is hoping to bring the reactors back online in November. But it still needs to win the approval of local governments. And some people are raising concerns about safety. Dozens of people are rallying in front of the building where NRA's office is located. They are upset about the authorities' decision. Operators are looking for consent only from Fukui Prefecture and Takahama Town, which hosts the plant. But authorities with other local governments want their voices heard as well. They want Constant Electric to get approval from all municipalities within the plant's 30-kilometer zone. Officials in those areas are obliged to drop disaster readiness plans and some residents are voicing anxiety. 
The plant employs many people, so the restart is a good thing in terms of the job situation. But when it comes to the safety risks, that's a different story. It's concerning to me because I have kids. Officials in Kyoto Prefecture say they've notified Council Electric of their concerns. Our community is in close proximity to the nuclear plant. We want a framework that ensures our voices will be heard. People around the world saw how the Fukushima disaster affected the lives of nearby residents. People living near the Takahama plant say Kansai Electric must come face to face with their concerns. Grand Otago, NHK World. Many rice farmers in northeastern Japan are still recovering from the massive tsunami that flooded their land in 2011. Salty water contaminated the soil, making rice difficult to grow. So farmers in Miyagi Prefecture teamed up with university researchers to grow a different crop, spreading hope with hops. NHK World's Kazumi Terai reports. This beer has a rich flavor and a faint scent of lemon. It's named Recovery Ale in hope of cheering up survivors of the disaster. Its major ingredient is barley growing in Miyagi Prefecture. During the tsunami four years ago, salt water covered rice fields along the prefecture's coast, making it difficult to continue growing the crop. Some farmers decided not to grow rice again. Two years ago, researchers began a project to plant barley that withstands salt in the soil and can be used to make beer. Okayama University's Institute of Plant Science and Resources supply the barley seeds. The institute is one of the world's largest barley seed banks. It holds about 15,000 types from around the world. Professor Kazuhiro Sato is a key figure in research and development. He's been experimenting with barley genes to produce a more delicious beer. It took him five years to develop a new type of barley seed. He provided them to areas hit by the tsunami. In affected areas, rice can't be grown, but I thought it might be possible to grow barley. I sure hope beer has the power to bring everybody together. Two years ago, Sato started an experiment on a farm untouched by seawater. He observed how the new barley grew. We can expect a good crop. With the professor's advice, farmers have adjusted the timing of the planting. They also improved the soil, so the crop is expected to increase. I never imagined things would improve so much this year. I think the barley is growing really well. Brewers and local people help make the beer. Of course, selling the beer is our final goal. But we want to rebuild the local community by bringing everybody together to play a role in our project. Sato has been working to develop a type of barley that resists salt and excess moisture. His research is expected to enter the final stage soon. I want to help rebuild the local farming sector by turning the area into a small center for beer production. Then to celebrate, I want to drink beer with everybody. Sato's research helped farmers in tsunami-hit areas make a living again. And the beer gives people in struggling communities something to hope for. Kazumi Terai, NHK World. After extending the deadline, Iran and six world powers came to an agreement. They put in place a framework for a comprehensive deal on Tehran's nuclear development. We have reached solutions on key parameters of a joint comprehensive plan of action. The political determination, the goodwill, and the hard work of all parties made it possible. 
Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif and EU Foreign Policy Chief Federica Mogherini on Thursday jointly announced the accord in Lausanne, Switzerland. The statement says Iran will restrict its uranium enrichment over the next decade, but the nation will continue, continue the activity. All its nuclear facilities will stay online. Western countries will lift their sanctions against Iran if both sides agree on a final deal. The negotiators extended the proposed March 31st finish date by two days. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry also spoke from Lausanne. Our political understanding arrived at today opens the door for a long-term resolution to the international community's concerns about Iran's nuclear program. The sanctions are in place because the international powers suspect Iran is building nuclear weapons. Iran insists its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. Iran and the six world powers will start talks to finalize an overall pact by the end of June.